Oh God, it's got warm in here, innit? Hi, welcome to Genexplicable. We've got a little bit of a different setup today. We are actually in this wonderful lady's house. If you would like to introduce yourself as my featured guest this evening. I'm her nanny, Shirley Kelly. <laughs> Here today to do another, yet another Gin Explicable. So cheers. Cheers, baby. I'm not up there, are you? It's a free, it's a free country, so you can just look, you look very, you look really nervous. <laughs> we are just chilling today. Well, we're not actually chilling. We've had a bit of a stress to set everything up and to do a fucking Gin Explicable. So shall we get into today's case? Okay, yeah. So today's case is about a woman called Gloria Ramirez, otherwise known as the Toxic Lady. I saved this one for you because obviously you're a nurse. She's a nurse. She was a nurse. Okay, so at about quarter past eight on the 19th of February in 1984, there was a lady rushed to the ER of Riverside Hospital in California and she was in late stages of cervical cancer. And when she arrived, she was basically a bit of a mess. She uh, was suffering with tachycardia for those who aren't medically trained. Very, very Oh, yeah, um, because she was having a lot of trouble breathing, she ended up just passing out. Mm. They, they did the ambu bag on her. Ambu bag. Amb, bag. And that wasn't working, so they were like, okay, obviously next course of action is... Action? Action is the defibrillation. You have to defibrillate, you have to cut your, your, like, your top open, don't you? Yeah. And when they removed the top, they realised she was covered with a complete oily sheen all over her body. It's like, right, okay, that's a little bit weird. As they started the defibrillation, one of the nurses said there was a really strange smell emanating from her mouth, which could only be described as fruity garlic. Oh. Have you got like it might have been um, keto acidosis? Yeah. How? What happens with that? You, you get the smell of pear drops on your mouth. And... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to this, the nurse who was drawing the blood complained of a smell of ammonia, right? Ooh. And um, also, she complained that when she was drawing the blood, there was actually Manila coloured crystals like forming in, no. in the blood. Yeah. Ooh. And it, isn't it very, very Weird. interesting? Weirdo, do you though? Know? The nurse who was taking her blood fainted. The medical resident, who was also in the room at the time, fainted and began to experience apnea and like shaking. Yeah, um, that all happened. At about 10 to 9, she is pronounced dead, uh, which is obviously very sad. Was she pronounced dead before they found all the, the shiny? Yeah. No, stuff. no, no. No? Where have, you, where have you been? After that. She came in at quarter past eight and she wasn't pronounced dead until ten to nine. Okay. So she was only pronounced dead after all this weird shit okay. that, was, that was happening. There was this nurse who was moving her body and she basically, start as she was moving away, this dead fucking corpse, she began to vomit, she began to feel sick. She again was suffering with apnea. And she fucking I was hospitalised for 10 days. There was 37 ER staff on at the time, and out of the 37, 23 were hospitalised. Would that be mass hysteria? Was that a theory? Maybe. Maybe it was just when we get to oh. the theories. Weirdly, though, more I've read a few things, and it's like fem the female staff were affected more severely. Maybe they're more hysterical. Or could it be hormonal? Ooh. Person that was in worse shape. Yeah. This is fucking weird. I think you're going to have theories about this because I didn't really know about this condition before. This is why I wanted to chat to you about it because medical resident, she was in intensive care for two weeks. So she was suffering with hepatitis, pancreatitis, and av is it avascular neuro ne necrosis? Yeah. What's that? It's... um. Basically, your blood vessels are dying, becoming necrotic. Yeah, that's dying. what. Yeah, yeah. So that's, but it was like particularly in the knee. She had to walk on crutches for months and months. Weird. How weird is that? Yeah. What do you think that that was? Do you know when we like, you know, if we're drink, if we're uh, do, excuse me. I'm, I honestly feel like such a man. I have more like shape the clothes, but this is a new top that my nan just brought back from. The, uh, the United States of America. Can you see that in the camera there? Wearing this like dead blokey top with these dead blokey like chill out pants because I'm going on holiday tomorrow. I'm only just now feeling like I'm relaxed into the flow of this video, which is quite tragic because we're like nearly halfway, we're probably nearly done. This is why you have to get drunk before Gen Explicable because otherwise it's awkward, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just weird. It's like even a little bit more weirder, right? Because 
at 11 o'clock the hazardous materials team come in right and they're all in the big hazmat suit and the hospital's like like look at the shit that's happened there's 23 of the staff ill there's this woman dead and there's fucking people with all the shit going on do you know yeah. what i mean all these guys just looking happy. around the hospital for any kind of any chemicals or anything like that and they find allegedly nothing there is nothing in the air. There is nothing around. Weird. So that's weird. Very, very weird. So obviously, you're thinking, okay, well, she's the toxic woman. That is what she's known as. So they looked at her autopsy, and there was absolutely nothing unexpected. There's absolutely nothing unexpected in a system. They actually determined that her cause of death was kidney failure by cervical cancer. There's a few things that were found that are a bit weird that I actually wanted to just... I wanted to ask you the things before like, I go into them to see if you know what they are. There was an unidentified amine in the system, which is obviously like a derivative of ammonia. Okay, so that's not that weird, the no. unidentified, unidentified amine, right? Where does it come from? Well, it's unidentified. Well, that's it. Like, that's it. It's, it yeah. could be a breakdown of something unknown in the body. That's why I need a, a, like a scientific mentor in this situation because yeah. there's also a, 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 nicoti a nicotinamide does that sound right one of the b vitamins yeah so that was found in the system as well is that anything particularly Not suspicious really. b vitamins are normally good Maybe however she um the nicotinamide is a b vitamin but it was also at the time being mixed into like crystal meth Ah, uh, there it goes then. No, Go but no, but there was no crystal meth found in the well, system. Well, you said there was and crystals like, when as she was drawing the blood. I don't think crystal meth goes into the body only to reform into the blood as crystals. I think you just like smoke well, maybe it as she'd crystals. Have bam. Do. <laughs> I mean, maybe. So there was also we heard of something called DMSO. So DMSO is a solvent used by can was or I don't know if it still is in the states. I've actually certainly never heard of it here, but it's a solvent used by cancer patients to kind of relieve pain, so it like absorbs oh. into the skin. That's maybe what could be causes the oily sheen yeah. on the skin. Yeah, she's had a bad batch of some sort of hallucinogenic or bad batch of some sort of drug but, but, that she's taken in the for pain relief. Why wasn't it found? in the autopsy. Maybe it was one of them that's expelled quickly. Are you going to put me out of my misery and tell me what's, what is the end result of this? There's no fucking end. This is why it's... This is why no, it's, it's gin. That's why it's inexplicable. Gin inexplicable, exactly. I do have a few theories that we can delve yeah. into now. Um, the first theory, as you said before, was is mass hysteria. Yeah. There's so, been cases of that before. There is, and you know what? I've watched the episode of House. Did you ever watch the episode of House? Where they were on a yeah. plane? Yeah, do you remember that? The brain can fucking trick you sometimes. Can't it? Yeah. Wouldn't because... explain the necrosis though, would it? Well, that's what I was just about to say. So it would, however, explain, obviously, there was no poison found in the body, so it would explain that. It would also explain. She's taken in an ambulance, and none of the ambulance staff had any no any of yeah. that shit i personally don't believe that one because of the necrosis that's the like defining thing for me i think obviously when you're in a heightened state of anxiety like that it's not going to help you you're not going to be chilled and your emotions are clearly you're on high alert for anything that might be weird so this is my thing it's like she she was obviously one the nurse had apnea don't mean to dismiss it at all but it could have been a panic attack at the same time because it could have you know it's it, i imagine i've not had apnea before but it feels like very yeah you know, it's a similar type of thing i think it could have been psychological for sure but the the thing as well the necrosis is very weird to me i don't really think that you can think yourself into having dying blood dying blood, blood vessels, vessels. No. i don't think you can think yourself into having so that's that right. so that's the first one Anything else to say about that? Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. So the second theory is the dimethyl the the di the dimethyl sulfone theory. So basically, DMSO the the thing that cancer patients were applying as attempt to relieve pain. Um, 
compound called dimethyl sulfone is basically only one oxygen atom away from 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 that. So dimethyl dimethyl oh fuck I can't even talk dimethyl dimethyl sulfone you said dimethyl sulfone can basically um crystallize at the right temperature which could explain the manila colored crystals could also account for the oily sheen on the body obviously as we talked about before and a garlicky smell because allegedly obviously i've never smelled it it has quite a garlicky smell dimethyl sulfone it in itself is harmless if it is broken down however um, and combined with natural sulfates in the body, it can turn into dimethyl sulfate. Well, that's us, isn't it? It's a poisonous, it's a poisonous compound. But the thing with this is, I don't know how easy it would be to break down because allegedly scientists have been all over this and said, like, it's highly unlikely that it would happen. It is just a po- like it's a possibility for things to break down because I've read things about like. Defibrillator, the electricity, the electricity in the defibrillator. Moving on to the next theory, the Ramirez family, Gloria's family, basically sued the hospital because they claimed it was already in a hazardous condition and it was not. That basically, ah, there you go. That might there you go. Her oh, sister, her now sister, we're getting somewhere. her sister <laughs> claims that if she had not gone to the ER that night, she would have still been, mm. she's still been alive. Um, Maybe. And maybe it's a big cover-up then. Well, that is that is obviously a theory. But in 1991, two hospital employees were treated for exposure to poisonous gas, which doesn't sound good. No. Does it? And then in 1993, just a year before Gloria's death, there was sewer gas found in one of the rooms on like a yeah. routine inspection. Again, doesn't sound like the best thing in the world. That probably is the one that I'm leaning more towards. I don't think that the hospital have been totally honest for one no, for one no. reason. <laughs> this shit's good in case they get sued. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that they're covering up for one reason or another. One more theory that I want to get into because I find it really interesting and I do like this is the one in a way, I know it sounds quite dark, but I kind of want to be true because i feel like it's the most interesting one for me last theory is meth not that she was on crystal meth i think that i've never taken crystal meth before and i've never had cancer before but what i can imagine is that the two don't really mix riverside county in california was known to be one of the biggest meth distributors at the time theory goes that basically hospital employees you know maybe people you know not necessarily doctors whatever but nurses or even porters cleaners getting the pre the precursor chemicals used to make yeah. meth and smuggling them out of the hospital in iv bags right ah. the theory goes that one of these iv bags that they were smuggling yeah. out was accidentally administered administered yeah. to gloria and she obviously it was fucked because no one's meant to yeah have that in your oh, body oh no that sounds really <laughs> yeah i'm kind of on the fence with that i like it but i don't know if i believe it um it could explain the ammonia smell a lot of the symptoms that everyone experienced was the same as yeah. the, you know like being in a meth lab or whatever um the only thing to kind of dispute that one is like the hazmat team didn't find allegedly they didn't find anything but again could that have been a cover up if the might have been a cover up yeah so that is the very good thank you what is your final like take from that what do you reckon drug into reaction i think that with the illegal substance well not illegal substances the chemicals being smuggled out the hospital and that's it so that's that so that's that all right <laughs> <laughs> bye, we're going to have our dinner. Cheers. Cheers, that was a good gin explicable. Bye-bye. Cheers. Mm.